Welcome to the world today with Brian Stiegel, the host. Um, this is episode 38. It is about 9 p.m. on a Friday, the 17th of April. And uh, just getting back into it. Uh, so topics today. I'm just going to talk a lot of smack on the coronavirus. Um just going to share some opinions, read some news about what's going on, and uh, talk about that. Oh, and I have a lot of interesting science stuff. Um, exoplanets that are like Earth. Um, I guess I should click the tabs. You know, NASA, we're going to space again. America in space. It's pretty nifty. Uh, AI. Let's see, uh, a little more philosophy and whatnot, uh, also I guess concerning AI, but that's just kind of what we have today. We also, very special episode, uh, because I'm bringing back the Woody. Now what's a Woody? That stands for Would You Do It? And, uh, you take something you don't want to do, and... You say, if someone offered me a million dollars to do this, would you do it? Really simple. And you might think that's a W-Y-D-I, but that would be Y-D, and that doesn't roll off the tongue. And I used a U, and I used a little bit of slang to make the, the name Woody also a name for a penis, so... And I think it started with the question of, like, would you suck a dick for a million dollars? And, I'll, you know, yeah, who wouldn't? Um, and there's a bunch of other constraints to that that I thought of, or, like, I guess reasons, more reasons why you'd do it. You could just, anyway, you know, check that out if you want. It's in a clip somewhere. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'll just store stort uh i'll stork it up in here be bringing babies all day long uh we're just gonna start with some covid stuff uh i suppose actually i lied i'm gonna talk about something else that's more fun because who cares about covid anyway we're all gonna die one day i'm just kidding okay so I found this article. I haven't read it yet. I'm going to read it here with you, point out important parts, and just go over it. Uh, headline, teenage girls who stabbed and shaved a neighbor they suspected was a rapist apparently avoid jail time. Um, now that sounds wild. They suspected he was a rapist. Was he a rapist? I, who knows? Uh, after they stabbed him, why did they shave him? Also, what did they shave? Head? Beard? You know, maybe they're like, oh, this man with a mustache, he's trying to uh, molest us. Oh, I have an idea. Let's bring him down somehow and then shave off his mustache. Because if you shave a mustache, the sexual predators... Uh, aren't predators anymore they're just sexual and they're still kind of weird but uh, it's doable you know um so what happened here man and i guess they decided to bring him down to shave him they were gonna stab him uh so we got two girls who wrongly accused a man of being a rapist and beat stabbed and shaved him were avoid uh, have avoided more time in custody after they were sentenced in the ACT Supreme Court, uh, and that sounds like a court where they test people, and that does not sound fun. Uh, but I did well on the ACT, so I bet I do well in this court as well. So the girls were 15 and 17 at the time of the attack. Can you imagine being 15 and? stabbing somebody man there's so much better things you want to um i guess i'm not going to get into this but 
girls were 15, 17 at the time of the attack. The court heard they had been smoking ice when, for an unknown reason, they concluded that the man who lived in a nearby unit was a rapist and decided to act. Now this is weird. Why'd they say smoking ice? Were they smoking meth? Also, what 15 and 17 year old smokes meth? That's a little early for meth, okay? And also, I heard that the, the average lifespan of someone on meth is seven years. So, well, I guess addicted to meth. Maybe not, maybe not just on it. But, uh, and why'd they say smoking ice? That's slang. That doesn't make sense. Or were they literally trying to smoke ice? And you can't smoke ice. You would vaporize ice. So I don't even understand what this is saying. Are they into, are they young children into drugs? It makes sense so that if they were smoking meth, they'd be paranoid. Then they'd be like, oh, that guy, but, you know, fucking Jim Bob over there with his goddamn mustache. He's been watching us. And we're home all the time, and he knows it. And he's going to come over one day and do something terrible. And I shouldn't make jokes about that, but here we are. And, uh, fuck it. So... The pair went to his home and forced him to sit with his hands on a table before one of them hit the table in the middle with a small axe. Jesus Christ. These girls are like fucking ISIS, dude. What's happening? The man's hands were then tied behind his back, and one of the girls stabbed him with a needle. Okay, that's not that bad. A needle? Why did she have a needle on her, by the way? A drug needle? Uh, see, this is getting so much more confusing. Did she have, like, was she sewing? She's like, he always watches me when I sew. I'm just trying to sit on my porch in my rocking chair, and he's watching me sew. And then decide that he's probably going to rape me. We got to take care of him. I'll bring my needle. Apparently, when the man tried to run away, the pair caught him and took him to the bathroom of another unit. They're just jumping all around this goddamn apartment building. He was punched and kicked and made to take a shower before the girls shaved him and cut his hair. Okay, this sounds like an insane uh, fantasy of some four-year-old. Like, well, I want to I wanna come over and... uh uh. Hit the table. I don't like table. And then, um, then we'll go over there, over there, and then, uh, and then we're gonna get bath time, and then I'm gonna cut your hair. But before I do all that, I think I smoke some meth, too. Just a little, though. No, I don't, I don't know what's up with this, this, this story, man. I'm not even sure if this is real. ABC News. The alphabet isn't news. Oh boy. Um, in his judgment, Justice Michael Elkheim noted one of the girls recorded the events in the bathroom. Oh my god. She put a pair of scissors to his throat and continued to punch and kick him. Threatened to stab him too, but if you're going to stab somebody, the most polite way to do it is to tell them first, I'm going to stab you, and then, you know, stab him. Then you're free to do it. I mean, if he doesn't say, no, don't stab me, then I think he's given you permission to stab him, right? That makes that makes sense to me. Um, the justice said that there was no evidence the man was responsible for any sexual assault. Also, if he was a sexual predator, two girls coming into his house, making him take a shower, would be like his freaking dream. They're like, oh, I got stabbed with a needle, but it was worth it. I don't... Whatever, man. Um, and he would just beat the fuck out of him. He'd be like, you stabbed me? Oh, well, I'm gonna break your arm. Um, the judge said, I have no doubt that the man was terrified throughout his ordeal and will suffer the psychological consequences for some time. His fear is evident in the short mobile recording I was shown. Jesus Christ. Pair given chance to leave crime behind. They pled guilty to unlawfully confining the man. Uh, so that's called kidnapping, and most people get charged with kidnapping for that. Unlawful confinement of humans. That's kidnapping or slavery. 
and uh, but they also assaulted him, maybe attempted to murder him. Um, they caused duress. I don't know. We're just going into getting sued here. Um, the judge justice, I suppose. Oh, also heard the the court also heard the other girl was pregnant. Are you hearing things out here like it's a grapevine? What do you mean you heard? Did anyone confirm it? What? It, plus, what does that matter? She's psychologically not stable. And if she was smoking ice, like it said earlier in this article, which I still doubt, she should not have a child. Um, and that child, that child might not be worth saving. You know, and that's just a joke. I'm sure there are a lot of, you know, meth babies out there that have had really great lives and bright futures. But I'm saying this one probably wouldn't, uh, you know, growing up in jail, you know, roaming a block, smoking some mice. You know, it'd be like the new Prince of Bel-Air. I grew up in a jail cell. I don't fucking know how that theme song goes anyway. Uh, so I'm glad I bailed out of that one early. So they get a nine-month sentence, each of them, but they're both suspended immediately. These two young people must be given every opportunity to put their lives in order, to leave crime behind them, and to live in society as decent and contributing members of society. Uh, the younger girl must be given the chance to have her mental health problems assessed and treated, and her co-accused must be placed in a position where she can provide her child with a safe and secure upbringing. Both will serve 12-month good behavior orders. That is a slap on the wrist, and it doesn't do anything. And these kids, you know, if they're smoking meth now and fucking stabbing people, I gotta tell you, their futures, you can only go up so much from there, you know? But that's a joke, too, because everyone, most famous people, or at least probably half, uh, abuse drugs. So, you know, she can end up like Joe Exotic. You know, he liked meth. She liked meth. Um, she doesn't like men, so maybe she can, like, join up with Carol Baskin. That goddamn bitch Carol Baskin. She's gonna fucking bankrupt me. Um... So that's a fucking wild story, but I thought that one was fun, I guess. I guess it wasn't fun so much as that it was horrifying, but it was uh, interesting, at least. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Okay, okay. Next. And we'll keep the uh, boring shit for later. And I'm scratching my fucking leg, and you're like, is this guy on meth too? No. My goddamn skin is so bad, and it's getting better, but, you know, it takes a while, so. I think I haven't scratched much for, like, two days, so it's slowly getting better. All right. Next is a story about chess. What's more interesting than chess? Checkers? Maybe. Monopoly? Yeah. But nevertheless, this story is about chess. So an Iranian teen shocks chess grandmaster Magnus Carlsen to win $14,000 prize. So that's pretty cool. Uh, apparently 16 is the kid's age. Uh, it's a male, it looks like. And I'm not reading the article, I'm just reading comments. So, um, Looks like. He was friends with the girls that stabbed people. He was friends with those two chicks from the last story. There's no way. This is a prank. I'm just kidding. That's my April Fool's, I guess, and that was terrible. Uh, but yeah, man, chess. That's pretty nifty. I, I think how... It's so interesting to me when people are really, really good at something, like chess, or card games, or video games, or sports, or, like, any athletics, or committed to, like, learning everything about something, you know? And I always feel like I can be that good if I really tried. 
Like, well, if I play chess every, all day, every day, I'd be that good, too. But then it's like, no, I'm not good at anything. And, and some people are just a little better than others in some ways. But not me. But chess, if I had to pick something to be really, really good at, it wouldn't be chess. Although that's my problem, is that if I just pick something and did it, I might be good at it. But because I pick something and then think about it and then like research it and then do it a few times and then take a break and then think about doing it again for a few years and then eventually I just give up. Like with the guitar, the guitar. So I wanted one when I was like a kid, right? Like young, I was like, oh, it'd be so cool. Or, I mean, not young, young, but like, you know, a boy and an early adolescent. Um, but I think I did get one, you know, which was great. Sometime in my f high school, I think, maybe freshman or sophomore year. It was later than I thought it would be. Maybe eighth grade even. Probably not 8th grade. It was almost definitely high school. I don't remember. Definitely past 7th grade. I will say that. Past 8th grade too, I'm sure. This had to be. Yeah, because I did not have it when I had my trumpet. Stop playing trumpet in 8th grade. It was in high school. Look at those powers of deduction. For some reason, all these rhymes are popping into my head. And I don't want them in my head. Because then I'll try to rhyme. And I'll rhyme one time. And be like. You better back up. Or I'm going to fuck you up. I just rhymed up with up. That's what's up. You know. It would be something stupid like that. Look like I went to the bank. And I drove in my car. And I don't have a tank. But I'm going to the bar. Uh, it would be that bad, or worse, so, what am I talking about, dude, if you had to pick something, though, no, I would not pick chess, uh, yeah, because by the time I even got that guitar, now that I'm back on that, by the time I got that, I, like, the strong desire you feel as a child to do things that you think are cool, you know, it dies out over time, that's why I think it's important to support kids and what they want to do early on and like let them change what they want to do also and just you know let people live their lives support them in any way you can you know I always thought like uh a lot of things were cool man I thought like you know skateboarding was cool and people who skated but I was never sure that I wanted to be a skater I just thought it would be cool to do um obviously the guitar that's a lot of work you know, I practiced for a while. I could do, like, three chords, maybe. Um, an intro to a slow song I can play, but that's it. And I can't play that well, either, so. Um, you know, I used to really want a four-wheeler. Like, I thought they were the coolest. You just fly it around, you know, like you're on a motorcycle. But it's got four wheels. It's safer and fucking... I don't know, man. It just always seemed fun. The freedom of it is what was enticing. And didn't ever get one. My mom tried, though, to her credit. We went somewhere. It was like 500 bucks. And then my mom was like, no, no, we can't afford it. And then a few days later, she's like, you know what? Screw it. We'll get that for you. So she called the lady that was selling it. And it was one of my, you know, one of my buddy at the time. It was his mom that was selling it, right? Like friends. So... She's like, oh, well, someone else already said they were going to get it, but they, you know, so I'm waiting for them to contact me back, and if they don't, within a few days, then it's, you know, it's yours, and then whatever happened, we didn't end up getting it, and I was pretty sad. They were selling it for like 500 bucks. I'm like, 500 bucks? Dude, of course we can swing 500 bucks. 500 bucks is nothing. Even as a kid, I'm like, dude, it's $500, bitch. I know how to do math. Uh, but even that was like uh, probably late, late middle school, or early high school maybe. But 
you know, I like to think that if I was able to do something like that early, that I would get really good at it, you know? Like, if I'd gotten a guitar when I was, like, eight, I'd be like, I'm a rock star, yeah. Or if I got, like, a fucking, you know, a four-wheeler, I'd be doing flips and shit. But then again, you know, we had video games early enough, and I'm terrible at video games. And I don't commit myself to anything, so I guess that's, you know, not how it works. But if I did have to pick one thing to be super good at, understanding I don't know man it's I, I don't think I would because like I said I'm too indecisive I can't pick anything if I pick something then I can't do it for the rest of my life you know I have to do that for the rest of my life to some extent or never do it and just have wasted it uh but if I always have it in the future to pick like if someone's like bro can you juggle eight bowling balls and a knife and I'm like I bet I can. He's like, no, no, you can't. He's like, I bet you $10 million you can't do that. And I'm like, all right. My one thing I want to be good at is juggling. And then I go and fucking juggle, throwing them around, catching them, going between the leg and just being wild. You know, that might be cool. But I'd be like super confident because at any point in time I can just be like, I'm catching that skill. Oh, there's a fire? My skill is going to be parkour. And I'm going to parkour around that fire. Stuff like that. Be pretty cool. Anyway. Uh, we got lots more stories. And they're just as fun. By the way. If you've noticed. Because I can't stop looking at it. There's like a little thing right here. It was a pimple. I say was, because it's not really pimple anymore, it's just damaged skin. But, it was growing there for like fucking three, four days, it started getting worried. So, you know, trying to pop it. Doesn't work, so you wait a day or two, try to pop it, it doesn't work. And then you're like, oh man, this kind of, you know, it kind of hurts, but not really. And then, only if you rub, you know, bother it. And then, I was like, dude, this almost looks like a wart. What if it just starts growing into a wart on my face? And I was freaking out. I'm like, I'm... I'm I can't afford to have a wart on my face right by my nose. I'm not, you know, Marilyn Manson or, you know, someone attractive. But I popped it today, so. And that's the end of my story. But if you notice this, like, what's that fucking red thing? Uh, that is damaged skin, so. Um, yeah. And all this, uh... All this coronavirus stuff is wild, though. You know, who would have thought it would end up like this? And I didn't. You know? I mean, I'm sure I said shit. It was dumb. I was making jokes. But it is getting more serious. I still don't know how I feel about it, though. You know, there's a period where I was like, Oh, this is so bad. We need to do everything we can to stop everyone from getting it. We all need to do a part. And then there's a point where you're like, eh, you know, this is kind of dumb. Maybe we're taking it too far. And you're like, no, no, we have to do all this. I'm like, I'm just arguing with myself. <laughs> but, uh, and, and because I've heard different doctors say different things. Def different, incredibly intelligent people say different things. And that's confusing. You're like, when you say that this is going to be a big overreaction, you say this could be like world changing not to mention how much it's already changed the world but like in the future if you know a hundred million people die worldwide from it if two percent of people die 70 percent of people are gonna get it it'll be like 35 million times seven be 150 185 so 185 million people would get it if 185 million people got it, 2% of them died, that would be, there's no way, like 2.3 million, like if a few million people die. That's in the U.S., worldwide. God damn it, god damn it. Did I do this wrong? Worldwide, man, it would be a lot more. Um, 
But yeah, so I've heard different people say different shit, and I'm not sure what to think, because I'm not a scientist, but I do, you know, find it interesting in, in what I've seen so far. Um, let me try to find the shit that I'm talking about on my computer. Um, I guess it's not even here anymore. But... Um, Jesus Christ, I guess it's not here. Well, here is one thing, though, about it. Um, and this one, we listen to AI as well. MIT's AI predicts catastrophe if social distancing restrictions are lifted too soon. Um, so stay inside. Please don't make all of this be for nothing, is what uh, someone added to that headline. But, so that's what's going on. And, uh, I believe it. You know, it's an AI. I mean, it's got intelligence in its name. And I don't. My name is Brian. And that doesn't mean anything. So. But that makes sense to me, you know. And I think it's, it's. It's, we're doing it. We might as well do it right and do it all the way and get the best benefits out of it. Like, if if we were going to lift it too soon and basically not have done it, we should have just not done it. Because uh, we're going into, like, a Great Depression, man. Um, people don't feel it. Uh, people feel it. Some people don't feel it, don't acknowledge it, aren't talking about it that much. Um, I'm lucky. I am working from home. A lot of people, not so lucky. And working from home is great. The week goes by super fast. I can spend all my time right here on this couch. Literally 16 hours a day. Sometimes I sleep here. You might notice the blanket and the pillow. And every now and then I sleep here. Uh, you know, once every few months. Don't judge me, dude. It's my couch, okay? Well, it's a love seat, but it's my love seat. And I love myself, so I sleep in it with myself, okay? Um, but yeah, man, I get it. The economy's gonna go in the crapper. Like, we know already that, like, 60% of Americans, something outrageous, uh, cannot afford a $400 emergency or $500 emergency, something like that. This is... That's one paycheck. That might not even be a full paycheck, but that's at least one paycheck. If so, if someone misses one paycheck, they might be fucked. Really fucked. You know? They might not get... It's just like, dang, man. A lot of people. And like... So at this point in it, there has been a huge stimulus bill that's fucked us all really hard. Um... And everyone supported it, you know, Trump and fucking uh, uh, old turtle guy, Mitch McConnell and fucking Nancy Pelosi and, and Chuck Schumer and all these shits. I mean, they're shits. They're giant shits that walk around in human shoes, but they leave a trail of shit everywhere they go. And... So we got fucked. And I can't give you all the details. I don't know much about it. I just know we got seriously fucked. So much wealth is being redirected upwards. Uh, wealth inequality is going to get a lot worse. And it's already bad. It's already the worst it's ever been. Now it's going to get worse. Um, I know they're not helping average people as much. I did have one thing about it. Uh, one other thing. Um, and I swear I brought this up. But, you know, I don't see it. But... Um, stimulus, oh, that's not it, but it's kind of it, and I'm doing something, so this is going to look stupid, so, I'll just tell you what it said, if I can remember what I'm talking about, this, the, the, the money that was allocated for small business loans, all has run out. 
349 billion or something. Oh, that's not much. And then they gave uh, a trillion and a half to corporations. And corporations don't need a bailout. Also, why will a corporation get bailed out with tax money when they don't spend any money on taxes? They don't pay taxes. Why do they get bailed out by the American taxpayer dollar? Also, the thing about being an individual is big things like this hurt more because you're one person. You absorb all the blow, right? You, with a corporation, the, the negative impact is kind of spread out along the whole corporation. And they're this big, so they can afford things like this. We can't handle a $400 emergency. Well, apparently, you know, the, and I'm not talking all business, but like the biggest businesses can't afford a, you know, I don't know how much you're losing, $4 billion, maybe, in extreme cases, $4 million, you know, but like shit like uh, the airplane companies, the flight companies, airports, um, Amazon, uh, and they're abusing their workers, and that's fucked. Uh, I don't use Amazon. I don't. For starters, fuck it. Also, if I want something, I'll go to a goddamn store and get it, or I'll order it off a website that sells it. But I don't order shit much. I go places and buy stuff. Because, for starters, I'm indecisive, and I'm an impulse buyer. If I order something, then I'm like, oh, I don't want it. Well, I can't cancel it. And if I order something and I want it, I want it now. I don't want to fucking wait. You know? What am I supposed to be? Paint on a wall? It's getting dry in here, man. But, like, if if I want something, I'll go to the store and get it. I want it now. I don't want to wait. And if I... It's just... I don't understand why people order so much shit. I get the convenience, but also, don't you want that thing? And you already spent the money on it, you know? Then with shit like shipping, it's like, oh, I'll pay $5 more to have it right now. Like, or you could just leave your house and go to the store down the street and save 20 bucks. Because it might be cheaper in the store, but it might be more expensive. It's always different. Um, point is... These large corporations are supposed to be able to absorb this negative impact better than individuals. That's the point of a corporation, right? And that they're so big, like the banks. The banks are too big to fail. Well, so is, you know, Amazon, Google, well, I guess Alphabet, you know, Apple, uh, fucking, did I say airports? Because I include airports, um... You know, McDonald's. And I don't know if they want bailout money, but it's coming. And it's kind of, I don't know. We got fucked on that stimulus bill. But the, the money for the small business owners, gone. What are they going to do? They are the backbone of the American economy. They're what we pride ourselves on as a country. Oh, we have so many innovators. We have so many small businesses. We have so many people who work to make life better for other people. And who come up with ideas and who... Uh, create and inspire and and just are a positive force for good in the world and then you got the corporations that are like evil incarnate like and it's not that and and don't get me wrong i don't think capitalism's evil i like capitalism i think it's better than communism um important to note capitalism well communism and socialism aren't the same things and I don't like communists, but I am a bit of a socialist in some ways, I guess. Although, you know, who knows, man. And while I'm in politics, before I come back to this uh, new uh, coronavirus stuff, uh, Bernie dropped out. It sucks. Biden's going to be president. I'll just say it now, man. I'm not going to vote for Biden. That dude's losing his mind. His policies are shit. He's, a, he's just a bad guy. He yells at people uh, for no reason, seemingly. You know? Oh, go vote for Trump. You're gonna... You just go vote for Trump. Like, you don't tell that to people who your vote... Whose vote you're trying to win. 
that's the opposite way that democracy is supposed to work. Oh, I'm not going to talk to you and listen to your ideas or let you even question me about one thing or the other. He's corrupt if someone's corrupt. You know, he's in bed with Hillary and Obama. Corrupt, right? Like, you want to talk about corruption, man. Everyone in fucking Washington is corrupt. You know? And they just gave $2 trillion. Just took it from us moved it right on up. Up the chain to the richest people in the world. And... You know, I don't even know what I'm on about right now, but I'm on. Uh, but that's, you know, I'm not voting for Biden. I don't think I'm going to vote for Trump. I think I'm going to stay home. Or I'm going to go right in Bernie or Tulsi or uh, any, you know, vote third party. I don't, I don't care. I'm not voting for Biden. He's, his policy is terrible. He just steals them from people. He steals credit for other people's works. Uh, he lies. Oh, I never said I'd cut... Social Security and Medicare. And then back in the day, you know, of course, there's a video of him saying, and when I said I would cut Social Security, I didn't just try one time. I tried once. I tried twice. I tried three, four times. I tried and tried to cut Social Security and Medicaid. If something needs cut, everything's getting cut. We're cutting Social Security and Medicaid. Like, he said that shit. And then he just says he didn't say it, you know. And, man, I'm so... It, it's just... God, I fucking, I love the country, you know, but I hate it. And if there was a revolution, I think I'd join it. Not, I don't even need to agree with all their ideals. We don't really need to agree on anything. Just that we should have the power and the voice. Not the fucking corporations and politicians and, you know, uh, the media and fucking all these giant industries, which can lobby people and which can donate which is a legalized bribe they can bribe politicians out in the open and ever, nobody cares it's like ah man i hate this i don't hate the country but i hate our government and i hate the people in the government and I don't know. But also, I don't. I think it's great. I think shit works how it's supposed to. Unfortunately, it was supposed to be for the rich. You know, when it was founded, only rich white landowners could vote. You know, male, rich white male landowners could vote. Now, everyone can, and it's better, but they just slowly gave us rights. But during that whole time, they've just consolidated their power we have no power they have all the power and but then again you cannot govern somebody without their uh, subjection to your government without their subjecting to your government uh people give you your ability to govern you don't just govern people people allow you to govern them right and i think we're i don't know man it's just crazy. It seems like every single Democrat running for president just, they all dropped out at the perfect time for Biden. Elizabeth Warren, that dumb bitch, decided to stay in, knowing she could not win. She would not win. No poll ever said anything that should make her think that she might win. And she stayed in, lied about a lot of stuff, accused Bernie of being a fucking sexual, you know, being sexist, that stupid dumb bitch, and I'll be sexist toward her now, she's gonna act like that and throw out these false accusations, and she just went with it, she loved it, she loved being the center of attention, it was disgusting, disgusting, but, you know, she stayed in just long enough to make sure Bernie loses on, uh, what was it, Super Tuesday? She stayed just long enough to make sure Biden comes out on top. Because now the progressive vote is split between Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, mostly between them, and then a little bit through other uh, people. But they did not take a significant portion. Whereas all the establishment people, most, almost all of them were voting Biden. A few might vote Buttigieg. And a few might vote Amy Klobuchar. But they knew going into it that they're not going to be that popular. And so Biden 
they will take less of the vote from Biden than Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg. Well, Pete's kind of between progressive and, well, he's not really progressive, but, you know, between Biden and Bernie. And those guys were going to take enough votes from Bernie that Biden's going to come out on top. And, of course, he did. Then everyone drops out at the perfect time. And now, oh, you know, fucking Biden crushed it on Super Tuesday. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why none of the exit polls were right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was rigged again, like last time. You remember last time that we had a Democratic election and then they ignored it and did what they wanted to do? And I'm not talking about Hillary versus Trump. I'm talking about the DNC and... You know, I'm starting to think, thank God that Trump won. And that's a terrible thing to say, in a way. But also, is it that bad? I mean, Hillary is, as Tulsi put it, the queen of warmongers. You know, the establishment Democrats, I believe, are far worse than Republicans. And I've come to start thinking this recently because a Democrat, an establishment Democrat, a neoliberal whatever you prefer to call them, they are a wolf in sheep's clothing. They act like they're one of you. They'll they'll run around. They might try to lead the pack of sheep. But then, you know, as soon as it gets dark, they're sneaking around, violating sheep, and then eating them. And that's, That's bestiality, and I don't think that's okay. Goddamn politician wolves. But really, I mean, it's just, it's everything's fucked. And, that, and then the Republicans, they seem to lie less about their intentions. Like a Democrat will tell you his intentions are to get more Medicare for people. Or to get us out of all the wars. Or to, you know, expand Social Security and Medicare. Or uh, create more welfare programs or jobs programs. And take care of uh, the atmosphere, the environment. And then they'll go and they'll sell the rights, you know, to dump toxic materials, you know, to whichever lobbyist or industry person pays more to their campaign, uh, they'll, or pay them for a speech, like fucking Obama giving speeches for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You don't got shit to speak about. Jesus Christ. But... I guess Obama has more shit to speak about than me, but, I mean, Obama's a piece of shit. And I know it's unpopular, but Obama, piece of shit. Same as Bush, same as Bill Clinton, uh, same as Trump. But Trump, at least, you know where he's coming from, you know? He'll say, basically, or people will think, oh, he said he was gonna, that he doesn't like Mexicans and he's not gonna let him in. Like, well, at least you know. And then when he tries to build the wall, he can be like, no, dude, you don't even like Mexicans. We're not building a wall here. What are you talking about? You know, like a Democrat would be like, oh, I want to, I want to expand Medicare, you know, insurance coverage. I want more people to have insurance. And then they'll go make this Medicare program that they'll take it from a Republican, rename it something like Obama took Romney care and then called it Obamacare and then got it passed and it was you know we can debate if it's a step in the right direction or not you know it might have been but also not because people don't have work to get health insurance now you're going to tax them for not having health insurance how does that help why not use that tax instead on everyone and just get everyone free health care I do not understand their stupid fucking program and so that's what Obama did. He just lied, right? And then fucking... This isn't a political show, so I'll stop this here in a second, but... Man, I just hate the goddamn shit that's going on. The election is gonna suck. It's gonna be Biden, old man with dementia, who steals his ideas from people, takes credit from people like 
uh, burning Elizabeth Warren and tries to take Obama or credit from Obama. Doesn't even remember Obama's name half the time. Uh, he's, uh, I'm not voting for him because he's going to sell our country out to the highest bidder. And that's going to be the same industries it's always been. And it's just, it's just bothers me. So I'll just probably vote third party or write in Bernie or not vote. But I don't like the idea of not voting because even though it is pretty pointless and we don't really live in a democracy and they also uh, rig elections. This, the exit polls were so far off when on Super Tuesday and, and throughout the primaries that it would it's considered election fraud. There was election fraud everywhere. Rigged ballots stuffed ballots, however they're doing it, it, just hacking the computer systems. It's easy. Anyone can do it. Uh, Christ, I'll be right back. I guess I gotta make space on my phone. Welcome back to the world today. Not only do we need to do that, I just need to edit it in, but I did it. Um, man, I got distracted looking at pictures on my phone. I'm an idiot. I needed to create space, I guess, or it just can't record that much because I made some space and it still says I can only record 37 more minutes, but that's okay because I think it's going to be a short one today. But, um, man, I used to be so fit. Jesus Christ. Just like six, seven months ago, I'd say about seven months ago, I was so fit. And now I'm not as fit. When I was out of work, I gained like 20 pounds. And then I've lost uh, eight or so six pounds since then and I'm trying to but you know how it goes I'm only eating meat so it's, it's not that hard but then I started eating some peanut butter I got weak and uh I was eating like a probably a half a pound to a pound of peanut butter a day just with a spoon scooping it <sniffs> licking it you know how normal people eat peanut butter uh taking little bites and holding it in my mouth and it's so sweet mm, peanut not penis, peanuts. Um, not normal nuts either. They have to be pea nuts, but they can't be nuts with pea in them. Uh, so a lot of restrictions, but I think we can make it work. Anyway, I'm just bummed about that. I'm working on it. I'm getting back in shape. Um, where are we at? Yeah, and you know, I lost what I was talking about, but basically I was going on about how uh, the government sucks. Everything sucks. Everything sucks. Um small business loan money is gone. I found the article, but now it's kind of finished. Um, but I also see social distancing may remain in place until 2022, Harvard researchers say. And that that's terrifying, man. Uh, I'm not even a social person, but I don't want to do this until 2022. Like, it's already... Like, being, it was a bummer not being able to go, like, do stand-up, which I'm not, you know, wasn't doing all the time, but at least, like, once a month or a few times a month, and, at, like, at least once a month. Usually I'd go, like, once a week, once or twice every other week. It sounds worse than it is, but, you know, I'm starting and trying to, anyway, like, I want to do that. I, I don't miss going to work. I like staying home all day and just doing fucking fucking around uh doing work from home I ended up doing well last uh, month of my job anyway dude this social distancing stays in place can you imagine the impact that would have on our economy like sports might be fucked airlines might be fucked uh, you know a lot of things might be fucked but then again also you know well, fuck them if they don't pay their taxes but just uh thought i'd share that with you man what man can you imagine just being stuck in here for two more years? I think we'll probably be in here for another... I mean, Ohio's stay-at-home order ends May 1st. That is 14 days from now, two weeks. Um, I don't think we're going to be going home or leaving home in two weeks, honestly. I think they're gonna, he's going to extend it more. He's been on top of everything and like being at the head of the curve, um, and, and he's not going to fucking let us go back out but 
Oh boy. Anyway, just that's what's going on with Corona. Um, back to some other interesting stuff. Uh, I have two things about Russia, and then we'll get to some science. Um, and these will just be quick. Russia, apparently, a Russian jet flies within 25 feet of a U.S. spy plane, way up there. Unsafe, high-speed maneuver, Navy says. Um, that doesn't bother me, man. You're flying in the air, they're flying in the air. Are there really any laws in the air that you have to follow? Like, on ground, we have laws. In the air, that's where birds are. There's not laws up there. Except maybe the early bird gets the worm. But there are some slackers who sleep in and they still get a worm here and there. So that's not even a steadfast rule. Um, well, what? Okay, so why was a Russian jet by a U.S. spy plane? I'd say we were probably spying on them. And then the Russian jet flew in. Uh, let's find this out from... CBS. Well, it's such a trusty news source. American and allied warplanes are... Look at that. Maybe you can hear it. So they're doing war games. Um, a U.S. surveillance aircraft flying in international airspace over the Mediterranean Sea. God damn it. Was intercepted... By a Russian fighter jet on Wednesday, the Navy said in a statement, the 6th Fleet said the Russian Su-35 flew within 25 feet of the U.S. P-8A Poseidon plane in an unsafe high-speed maneuver in front of maneuver, putting the American pilots and crew at risk. While the Russian aircraft was operating in international airspace, this interaction was irresponsible, the statement said. We expect them to behave with an international standard set to ensure safety and to prevent incidents. The Navy said that... The incident lasted approximately 42 minutes, and the crew of the U.S. P-8A aircraft reported wake turbulence following the incident. Uh, last June, another U.S. aircraft flying over the Mediterranean Sea was intercepted three times by a Russian fighter jet. Maybe we shouldn't be out flying all over the world spying on people. Ever think of that? I mean, they have as much a right to stop us from spying as we have to spy. They'll spy on us, we'll spy on them. They'll catch us, we won't catch them. Because the whole Russian thing was fake. And here's more on that being fake. Um, so this says, and I don't know where this is going, but it's from CBS. So I guarantee they're getting this kind of wrong. Go away. Um, so it says... Report footnote, footnotes show FBI knew Russians had early knowledge of steel material. And the steel dossier was fake. It was forgery. Um, the whole thing is fucked. And it wasn't even... Uh, and it was a lie, too. I don't remember a lot about it. But I do remember those things. And what was the dude's name? Carter Page, they wiretapped Carter Page with the FISA warrants, and they did that illegally, and then they made up a bunch of shit, and they put it in a report uh, in the Steele dossier, which, all, and that was intelligence officials just made shit up. They went to a bar, they listened to a dude talk about Trump pissing on people on video, and then they fucking put it in this dossier, and it's taken as fact, and... Most of it is false. So, the whole Russian thing is a hoax. Uh, you won't convince me otherwise. Um, or you could try, but I guess we could, you know, we just go back and forth. And if you're citing MSNBC and CNN and shit, then, you know, it is true according to this person and this person. Like, uh, what about when the government was like, wait a second, you lied 18 times in this report. And they're like, oh, did we? Oh, we must have got a detail or two wrong. There were flat-out lies. It wasn't wrong details. Anyway, 
So I will skim this. Uh, newly declassified footnotes from a government report first obtained by CBS News show that despite multiple warnings about Russian targeting and the potential for disinformation, the FBI relied on the controversial Steele dossier to secure surveillance warrants for a Trump campaign aide before and after the 2016 elections. Among the revelations, a 2017 U.S. intelligence community report indicated that two individuals affiliated with Russian intelligence knew of former British spy Christopher Steele's election investigation in early 2016, three months before the FBI would begin citing the dossier. In early June 2017, USIC report indicated that two persons affiliated with Russian intelligence services were aware of Steele's election investigation in early July 2016, the footnote said. The supervisory intel analyst told us he was aware of these reports, but that he had no information as of June 2017, that Steele's election reporting source network had been penetrated or compromised. Wow, compromising, man. So the FBI first sought the warrant from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, uh, which is where they got the fire fi FISA warrant, uh, to wiretap Trump campaign aide Carter Page in 2016 and relied in part on material from Steele. And Carter Page was a CIA asset as well. Um, and the government lied about that, especially the deep state. The timing is notable because the June 2017 intelligence report noted the FBI in the earliest days of Special Counsel Robert Mueller's probe, which found nothing, which was opened weeks earlier in May. The Bureau, Bureau had been tipped off that Trump campaign aide George Papadopoulos had said that the campaign might help get might get help from Russia on damaging information about Hillary Clinton. Here's the thing. Hillary asked Russia for dirt on Trump, not the other way around. So then she just goes and blames other people for the shit she does, you know? She'll come up and fucking, you know, you'll be sleeping. She'll come up and fucking piss on your face and be like, why are you watching me pee? Like, bitch, I was sleeping. You showered my face with your goddamn warmongering piss. My mustache fucking itches my nose all the time. I trimmed it though, so it looks better. But I trimmed it like a week or two ago, so. No, probably about a week ago. It could not have been two weeks ago. It's too short. Um, Maybe it was two weeks ago. Who knows? I went out. No, I didn't. I didn't go out. I didn't do anything. I don't remember why I shaved it. I think it was just getting itchy. More important things are happening in the world other than beard information. Steele has insisted that his information was unverified. The New York Times noted last year that in a lawsuit deposition about the dossier asked whether he took into account that some claims might be Russian fabrication. Steele replied yes. Steele was also asked during the deposition whether he warned Fusion GPS that a central problem when you are a Russian intelligence expert is disinformation and the Russians have a long history and advanced capability in disinformation. The Times noted that the FBI considered whether Russia had polluted the stream of intelligence, but did not give it much credence, citing a former official. Another newly declassified one note speaks directly to steel sources, though some sections are still redacted. Anyway, so it looks like... This is a pretty big uh, report, but what does it say? So, the December report by Justice Dis Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz examine the FBI's investigation to alleged coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia, as well as the FBI's four surveillance warrants for Page, which they lied to get and then lied more and more each time until the last one. I think they had something like 18 or 27. Uh, how do they put it? I mean, they put it in some sneaky way to try to not just say outright lies. You know, exaggerations or fabrications. Bitch, those are lies. If you're like, you know, if you cheat on your girlfriend and she finds out, she confronts you. She's like, uh, you know, did you sleep with that girl? And you're like, no, I was here that night with you. She's like, what? No, you weren't. I'm like, yeah, I was. You were drunk. Uh, you know, I took care of you and stuff. That's like what they're doing. They're not like, oh, well, I mean, you know, we kissed, but we didn't have sex. And she's like, oh, well, I don't know where this is going. But, you know, they didn't just exaggerate. They just outright uh, fabricated stuff. 
Horowitz concluded the FBI was justified in launching the investigation. Bullshit. Uh, Dubbed Crossfire Hurricane, although he found 17 significant inaccuracies and omissions. I found the fancy way that they said lie. Uh, Inaccuracies and omissions? You mean lies? A lie of omission. That's a thing. There's a term for it. It's when you don't tell someone something that leads them to believe something that isn't true and you purposely do that. That's a lie, you know? Like, if someone's like, hey, did the U.S. bomb Japan in World War II? And you're like, "Uh, listen, we dropped a lot of bombs, you know? Nuclear bombs? We dropped a lot of bombs. Not nuclear bombs. I don't know about any nuclear bombs. And then then he goes to his buddies and is like, dude, we didn't even launch a nuke in World War II. And like, "Uh, yeah, they did. There's video of it. And then... I mean, that's basically what these people are doing. That is an omission. And you do it purposely to lead somebody to believe something that isn't true. Um, Some of, okay, 17 significant inaccuracies and omissions in the FBI's handling of FISA, Foreign Intelligence Service Surveillance Act, applications to surveil Page, who, again, Carter Page, was a CIA asset. Why are you curtailing and surveying a CIA asset? But some of Horowitz's findings were disputed by U.S. Attorney John Durham, who is conducting a broader investigation. At the time, Durham said, we do not agree with some of the report's conclusions as to predication and how the FBI case was opened. After the release of the Horowitz report, Steele's attorneys disputed some of the findings and said that they had only been given highly redacted portions of the draft paper for review and comment. It's just, it's just fucking ridiculous, man. Redacted your list. Redacted your list. Redacted terror, redacted list. Um, what else is happening in the world today? NASA sending some dudes into space. And Elon Musk, that'll be cool. NASA and SpaceX once again will launch American astronauts on American rockets from, you guessed it, American soil. And uh, astronaut Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin will launch to the International Space Station on the Crew Dragon spacecraft atop a Falcon 9 rocket. Cool. Uh, It's just the International Space Station, dude. How's that breaking news? Breaking news. We're putting more guys on the thing that we send guys to sometimes. Maybe because it's all in Americans doing it. Americans. American rockets. American soil. Uh, You know. Who knows. But it's. You know. Call me when we go to the moon. Okay. You know. When you send a monkey to Mars. Let me know. And I will check it out. But you're just putting people up on the International Space Station. It's like sending someone to a hotel in Mexico. You're like, oh man, we went to Mexico. It was so dangerous. And like, oh really? Wow, that's crazy. And like, yeah, you know, we couldn't even leave the resort or the the Four Seasons. I don't know what hotels are in Mexico. Or, you know, uh, La Cuatro Otra Tempo. Poor, uh, I, I don't know. The four other temperatures. That's not a good name for seasons. What is a season in Spanish? I bet it's season. No, no, I bet it's not. Season. Hmm. I'm not going to Google it. Who cares? Um... Now, for the science. I guess we did touch one small science thing. I guess two. The the MIT's AI, man. AI is getting crazy. Uh, But I had something else about AI. I'll bring that up. Uh, And this was a post. Not like... uh, I don't know. It's just a meme. Well, I guess it's a picture with someone saying that they noticed something. And I've explained this too much already. So someone says, A common theme I noticed in Star Wars is that respect for droids is a sign of someone's true character. I think that applies a lot to the Westworld show I've been talking about. Like, if you're bad to the AI in Westworld, 
who are indistinguishable from real people. If you didn't know, one way or the other, you couldn't say that one's a robot, that one's not. Um, it's the same, man. If you go in there and you're evil and you become the villain and you just rape people and shoot people and fucking... Because it looks like people are dying. For starters, that's got to have some real psychological effects. Like, video... But maybe it doesn't if you think and know it's a game. But also, that may create, like, distorted perceptions and illusions. Like, you know, because I don't think realistic video games are that bad. But, like, we still think it's bad if you watch, like, an ISIS video and a dude gets his head cut off. Um, or you see people actually die in real life. Or, like, on a video, but, like, a real person actually dying. Um, so then how could you go in this game and just kill things that look like people? For all intents and purposes are people. We just assume that they're not conscious. I don't know, man. But I, uh... It, is, it would reveal your true character. If you go in there and you just start killing people and raping and fucking pillaging and robbing, then you're no, you know then that's who you are deep down, and you would do it if you thought you could get away with it. Or thought that there weren't going to be any negative repercussions. You're just too much of a coward, I guess, to do that in real life. Um, which is not a challenge, but... If you're good in the world where... things aren't real. If you're... I don't know... It just seems to me that, then again, you play shooting games and you kill people in shooting games, and that's bad. But also, those are definitely, I feel like it's different. Those are definitely not real, not alive, not conscious. To an extent, they could be. Who knows? Um, I don't think so. They don't have autonomy. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man wild stuff i think i would be nice to robots droids ai because i'm nice to shit in video games i don't like to do you know kill people unnecessarily or you know steal from the poor orphan or you know uh or murder the parents and orphan the child it's you know that stuff isn't what i like to do in video games sometimes you know Um, but I'll move on here. I got a couple other things to talk about. Um, and I got this new vape. It's pretty beat and it's not, uh, and it's just cool. I like it. It's better than my other ones. The other one kind of sucked. Had pods. Trump freaking banned all the flavors, you know, because they're goddamn stupid assholes. And so I had to spend money on this new vape. I didn't quit vaping. Uh, and I don't care if kids start or quit vaping, honestly. Um, what are you going to do? They're fucking kids. Uh, well, let's not give them tasty flavors. Now they're just going to spend more money on it, honestly. Because they made like a loophole where they can still sell disposable ones with flavored juice. You just can't sell like pods, but you can sell base like a pod in a device, but it's all in one and disposable. That's what they're doing. It just costs more. But it might it'll make them easier to get one... But, like, whereas you had to buy a pack of, like, four pods before, now you just gotta buy one disposable. And it's, like, half the cost. But one disposable can to four pods, so really it's twice as expensive. Um, yeah, per milliliter. Anyway, goddamn Trump and the goddamn stupid fucking little pussies out there. Oh, whining about the kids and the goddamn vape. Goddamn you. Goddamn you. God damn you. But I like this, so I guess it worked out. For me, anyway. Um, a lot of people gotta control what other people do, dude. And I'll say this one more time, dude. You sell flavored alcohol. Alcohol flavored like candy. Uh, alcohol flavored like cinnamon. You sell alcohol flavored like grapes and, and, and berries, you know? How is that any different? How is that not... For children. We all know that kids like drinking four locos because they tasted good. That's the only thing they could get down. Everyone knows kids like 
I, you know, Smirnoff ice or something because they're easy to get down, you know, because they don't like drink. So why don't we get rid of Smirnoff ice and goddamn cotton candy vodka and blueberry schnapps or whatever, peach schnapps. I don't know. It all sounds kind of good, but kids are drinking that. Kids not sitting there fucking drinking a scotch or something. They might drink uh, Hennessy or what else am I saying? What's that other one? Jaeger. They might drink Jaeger, you know? Like, uh, they might drink Southern Comfort. It's not bad. But, like, no kids drinking fucking an old fucking scotch, you know? Neat. Is. <sighs> it just doesn't make any sense, dude. It just does not make any sense. And I don't think it helps kids either. It's easy to get shit when you're young. You just... Ask somebody to buy it for you. You say, hey, guy, you have an older sibling. Your older sibling's the delinquent like us. Can they go do delinquent shit for us so we can be delinquents? And they're like, sure, I don't have anything better to do. Can they go buy you beer and shit? Or cigarettes or, or blunt wraps or fucking whatever. Or you just find your one friend that's 21 and you drag him along every time and you throw him five bucks. It's just, it's goddamn stupid. And why would you not allow it for people who are 21 and over? They already changed it, so you got to be 21 and over to get tobacco products. So why do you have... Like, if alcohol were legal at 18, I'd... But it's 21, and we can have flavors. Now, tobacco and everything is 21, and you can not have flavors. It's just, it's such a shitty, sneaky way to try to control people and get us back on fucking cigarettes and, and the fucking disposable things are just going to make more money off of it. You know, they don't care if a quarter of the kids vaping quit because the three quarters that continue vaping are going to spend more money than they would have otherwise. And so these people will make more money in the end, ultimately. They say, oh, we can lose 25% of young vapors. We'll just make the vapors that continue to vape more expensive. And that shit just makes me so mad. Why do they got to interfere with people's goddamn freedom? And, again, who gives a shit if a fucking kid is vaping? I don't give one single fucking shit, dude. You know? I don't. As an individual. You know, on a society level, yeah, they probably shouldn't do it. Yeah, kids probably shouldn't drink either. Obviously. But it's going to happen. You know? Am I going to run up and fucking take a beer from a kid? No. What am I, a fucking narc? That's not my choice, ultimately. I mean, if they're like children, yeah. But, you know, if they're 16, they're staying in for the night, they're fucking hanging out, uh, have a beer or two beers. Who gives a goddamn shit? And uh, I don't know what the world we live in. Everyone's so like, oh, their brain's not finished developing. Yeah, well, by the sound of your fucking arguments that you make about all this other shit, your brain isn't finished developing either. And, you know, people drink alcohol their whole lives. Like, a lot of cultures still drink it from the time they're young. You know? Uh, all throughout the world. All throughout time. So, if a kid fucking drinks... So, of course, you shouldn't be a fucking alcoholic when you're young. But, you shouldn't be an alcoholic when you're old, either. And it might be harder for them to control. But, that's you just teach them shit. And, I don't know, I just don't like the whole goddamn giant control. We gotta control what flavor you put in your vape. How, you know... God damn. Um, and you're going to end up with bad people anyway. You don't think these two girls who were smoking ice and stabbed and shaved a guy they thought might be a rapist. You don't think they're vaping too? They're probably not. They're probably sm Those girls smoke cigarettes. If you smoke meth, you fucking smoke cigarettes, dude. I don't know one dude that... Well, never mind, that's not true. I do know people that have done meth and have not smoked cigarettes. But only very few, I'll say that. Um, you know, but what do we got going on in the world other than that? Uh, we got, we got, we got... Who are the teenage uh, girls who killed people? You know, get rid of this Iranian grandmaster... Bro, Nebraska universities are going to offer free tuition to Nebraska Nebraska students with family income of 60 grand or less. That's crazy. That's incredible. 
with family incomes of sixty grand or less. Oh, that's not that incredible. So mostly single mothers are going to, you know, single parents who don't make much money are going to be able to go to... And that's good. That's better than nothing. But why 60... And that's hardly anything. Because consider this. You have two people making 30000 a year, which is, like, not enough. I mean, it's not that much, you know? I think uh, f that's barely below poverty. Or barely... Yeah, it's below poverty, 30K a year. So if two people made that much, then their kids can't go to school. It's like, okay, well, you make $200 too much. So you are going to have to give us $100,000 over the next 20 years, you know. So we're going to give you 60000 in debt and then 40000 in interest for the next 20 years. Uh that 60,000, like, oh, you only make that in one year, but both of you do. Two people work and make it in one year. Extra money, you're going to have, what, like, temp it's just, it, I don't know. It makes me so mad that we don't have free goddamn college. Oh, I had an, 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 an idea, too, an argument, one might say. Um, so I was thinking about, like, people don't think the minimum wage should go up. And the people who are still working now among this coronavirus are the people who should get that increase in the minimum wage. And you're like, oh, well, they shouldn't work at McDonald's and they shouldn't work at a grocery store. Despite all the facts that many adults work there as like full time or part time job, like and they might have two or three of them. But they work there to try to like make ends meet for their family. They might not be educated or or very qualified, but they're trying. They're working hard, forty hours a week, you know, fifty, sixty, and they still can't provide for their families. That's ridiculous. Now, right now we're seeing a case where all the essential employees, other than like the the nurses, which are still way underpaid. But they're at least appreciated more than fast food workers, grocery store workers, gas station workers, you know, sanitation. Like, all the jobs that people look down on and say, oh, well, if you you should have learned a skill if you didn't want to flip burgers your whole life. What if you like flipping burgers? But here's the, oh, well, then become a great chef. What if, you know... You're not a fancy dude. What if you don't want to be a fancy chef? You just want to be a chef. You just want to make good food, good greasy food, you know, but you can't afford to open a business, you know, and you like the atmosphere. I don't know what the thing is, but think of it this way. Imagine everyone in the United States was like at the very same level, right? The very same level. And no one was above anyone. No one was below anyone. Everyone's skills were the same. Everyone was exactly equally competent right and then you have your doctors your lawyers you know your politicians uh your uh biologists your physicists mathematicians business people you know you got your uh landscapers and your fast food workers and your gas station employees and and uh grocery store people and transportation and, but everyone is the same level, skill, and competence, right? But we still need people to work there. But we need people to work there or else the society can't function. And let's say we can't bring in all of those people from outside of the U.S., you know? Say it's just us. Everyone's as skilled as everyone else. Everyone has the same amount of value as everyone else. Some magic world, some magic way. And you're going to say, I'm the same as you. I'm just as skilled as you, but I'm going to pay you shit. It's like, well, why? You need me to work here because you need your coffee in the morning. You need your gas. You know, you need groceries delivered. Or, or a taco made, or whatever it is. And like, well, I acknowledge we both have the same value. And, you know, but I think this is uh, just a temporary job for you. You're like, how is it a temporary job? 
I'm the same skill as you. This is just what I like to do more than what you you like to do that. I like to do this. But they're both just as essential in the in the economy. In fact, stuff like that is almost more essential. Food preparation, you know, uh, the transportation of of goods, you know, like all that kind of stuff is just as important, if not more important than like lawyers and doctors and shit. Because you can't have a doctor without someone growing food for the doctor. Everyone's essential. Everyone leans on everyone else. Why are we not paying people a fair living wage? You're saying, I acknowledge somebody needs to do that. I acknowledge that you're just as valuable as me as a human being. And that you deserve to be paid what you're worth. And your time is, is inherently worth more than what I'm willing to pay you. Because... Someone needs to do it, and it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Someone needs to do it. You need someone to do it for you, yet you're not willing to pay them more. Or you're not willing to say that, yeah, we should increase minimum wage, because you're right, those people shouldn't be below poverty working 40 hours a week. Someone has to do it. So why are you going to doom the people that do have to do it, that do end up doing it? You're just ahead of everything dooming them to be poor. You could be the best goddamn McDonald's worker there is. If you, you know, like worker, not manager or anything else. Well, even managers don't get paid shit, probably. But if you're the very best fucking McDonald's worker, you can run a whole McDonald's at at, uh, at lunch rush, drive through and counter, and cooking, you know, and cleaning up the dining area. If you can, well, you know, you're fucking mad at... They're like, well, we're still going to only pay you minimum wage because that, you know, you're just not worth more. And I, I just don't get it. You acknowledge you need someone to do it. Why are you treating them like shit? You know? No, you don't deserve a living wage. Why not? You come here to eat. Your your kids come here to eat. But you're going to point at that guy and say, hey, you know that guy who made you so happy by giving you that, that happy meal with... With the good food and that, but well, he's poor. Well, why, Daddy? Well, because I think he doesn't work hard enough. And the kid's like, "What, well, Daddy? Worked hard enough? He brought me my food. He was polite. He had a good manners. He, you know, he, he he was quick, but but you know, interested and caring. You know, he was like the right amount of everything. Well, why doesn't he deserve to get paid? Well, because this is a shit job. Well, but we're coming here, so why are we letting people cook for us who are at a shit job? And if they're not worth anything, they're shit people. So I'm letting shit people cook for me at a shit job, serving me shit food. That's good food or shit food, but and then I'm going to eat it, and somehow I'm not a piece of shit too. I just, I don't get the whole thing, man. Like, I just don't, man. People need to do it. Why can't the people that are going to have to do it, why can't they get a living wage too? You get a living wage, why shouldn't somebody else? You know, you might have went to school for eight years, but it doesn't mean you work harder. It doesn't mean you're smarter or anything. It just means that you probably had more opportunity. Maybe you did work really hard, you know. Maybe you didn't have it. Maybe you had a lot of hardships and worked hard and you got rich and you think, I earned all this. Well, people helped you along the way, didn't they? Someone probably stuck their neck out for you at one point or another. And that's what we should be doing as a society for everyone else. We should have the free Medicare. We should have free college. Like... It, what would you rather have? A nation full of stupid, stupid people who, stupid, sick, poor people? Or a nation of, you know, people who are doing decent, who are educated, and who are healthy? Isn't that the, the end goal of everything? You know? Um, but I'll be right back because I'm going to have to start another goddamn clip and edit these all together. All right, we're back at it. For some reason, now I have 30 more minutes. So that would be like 45 minutes plus 37 minutes uh, plus 30 minutes. That's around two hours. So I might not go the whole 30 minutes, but, you know. So that's just what I've been thinking about with the with the goddamn how we treat people in, in the world. I don't understand why it would be better to do better for everyone. And that just that should just kind of, I don't know, it's bothering me a little bit. And the government sucks and everyone fucks us. And 
Uh, I like working from home, though, so, you know, can't complain. Um, here's a new development in very important things in the world. Land O Lakes, Land of Lakes, erases American Indian Butter Maiden from packaging. Um, you know, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is it people being too sensitive? Is it not? Um, it's kicking the American Indian Maiden off the Butterbox holding its signature product. The logo had long been criticized as racist and stereotypical. Hand in hand with human and sex trafficking of our women and girls. What in the hell? The logo had been criticized racist and stereotypical with North Dakota Representative Ruth Buffalo uh, telling the Grand Forks Tribune the image goes hand in hand with human and sex trafficking of our women and girls. What are you talking about, dude? Of Indian girls? To who? Who's buying Indian or Native American slaves? Who's sex trafficking Native American girls? I mean, sure, 300 years ago. Yeah. 200 years ago? Yeah. 100 years ago? There was probably still some of that going on. Maybe even 60, 70 years ago. Maybe now, but I don't think so. Hopefully not. Um, is the government still allowed to take people's kids from American Indians? Anyway, um, it's a good thing for the company to remove the image, but that the nation needs to keep pushing forward to address the underlying issues that directly impact an entire population to thrive genocide. Um, brah, this, that's... This is what kind of bothers me. And I get it. Native Americans did survive genocide. A few hundred years ago. The ones, you know, and they didn't survive a genocide. I mean, some of them survived a genocide, sure. But some of them, you know, were killing people just as much as a white man. I mean, they were, they were, and I'm not saying this in a racist way. Native Americans were savages. They were a brutal people, some of them. You know, so I, don't, I don't know if any Native Americans were peaceful. I, I would think that some definitely have to have been, but most of them, their, their society was based on war. It, like the ancient Greeks and the Romans, they valued war. They valued the, the ability to fight in war. And like, like some Native Americans, you had to go out and scalp you know, one or three people of another tribe and bring them back, and then you're a man. Like, it's not like they weren't killing people, too. And it's not like they didn't kill white people and everything. They would have genocided the white people if they had the chance. At least some of them, you know, like uh, the Comanches and shit. Like, there's uh, different tribes, obviously. And also, every single race has survived a genocide. Okay. Everyone, uh, Jews in Egypt and the Holocaust. Uh, I mean, just everyone. If you're if you're alive, somebody in your ancestry has sur survived a genocide. It's impossible not to have been the case. And I get it that it's fresher and it hurts more, but you know. We go out, and this is what bothers me, that they're going to bitch about, oh, there's an Indian girl on the land of legs, butter. The the butter people are using the Indian girl. To, oh, my God, the butter. The, uh, bro, our government is selling bombs to Saudi Arabia so they can commit genocide in uh, across the Middle East, in Yemen, right? Uh, it's just... That's what makes me so mad about all this stupid goddamn political correctness shit. You're going to sit there and bitch about, oh, you call this person that, oh, you said uh, fag or retarded, oh my god, that is that is the worst thing you can do. Like, There's worse shit going on. Our government is fucking bombing people half a world away, and you're all standing there worrying about fucking sounds and letters coming out of people's mouths, like the kind of fucking morons that you are. 
Who gives a shit? Oh my god. You said a word that somebody doesn't like. Like, what if I just picked words? Like, important words? And, and like, oh, I want to try this now. I want to pick some very common words and go to, like, a, a meeting of liberals and be like, liberals, uh, 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 point of order, um, some words you're using are triggering me, uh, for instance, I don't like any articles, so the, a, whatever other articles there are, is, I don't know, what are articles? Um, I don't like those, they're triggering, so don't use them. And then see, trying to people, like, give speeches and shit without saying the, or a, or other articles. Let's see what the other articles are, I'm curious now. Uh, articles. It's a word that is used with a noun to specify specify grammatical definiteness of the noun. And in some languages, extending to volume or numerical scope, the articles in English grammar are the and, a, n, and in certain contexts, some. Uh, that's pretty nifty. Anyway, yeah, what if you're like, hey, don't use those four words. It triggers me. Like, there's more important shit to be worried about than fucking words hurting you or your feelings being hurt. Like, yeah, you know, maybe it sucks. Don't pay attention to it. What do you give a fuck? And I don't get why some people, like, it's just everything. It doesn't, nothing makes sense anymore, man. Like, if someone said something that you don't agree with and you think it's bad, ignore it. Why do you got to tell them, oh, hey, I don't like this joke you made. Oh, hey, when you said this common phrase, that's actually racist. Like, you know. Sure, let's move them out slowly, but don't, like, call people, don't cancel people, you know, for, for, for stupid shit like this. And it's like, why don't you cancel people in the goddamn American government who rape people? Biden is a goddamn sexual predator. We are electing a goddamn demented sexual predator as a nomination for the Democrats. And then you're gonna, so all, the, it's, God damn it. Democrats, oh my god, you gotta respect women, you gotta respect, and you do, you do have to respect women, but how about women that politicians abuse, you don't have to respect them, you know, Monica Lewinsky, fucking Tara Reid, or whoever, you know, this fucking guy, Biden, uh, assaulted, not to mention all the women and girl children that he has sniffed and touched and caressed, did all this fucking weird shit to. And that's that's really, I guess, part of what bothers me so much about what's going on, man. About And I guess I couldn't put it into words until now, but with the cancel culture shit, it's like, listen, dude, there's more important stuff to worry about. There's a goddamn pandemic, you know, spreading through the world. There's massive amounts of murder and genocide being propagated by our government and the military industrial complex that we support through our tax dollars via the American government, you know? There are countries that we have fucked, you know? We overthrow governments like they're nothing, you know? We don't give a fuck. We'll overthrow your government in about 22 seconds if you, you know, don't give us your oil or whatever we demand of you. It just, you know, it bothers the shit out of me, man. And I think that's the best way I can put it. Shit's real. Shit sucks. Shit happens. We murder people all across the world every day as Americans. Like, as a society, as a country. We, we are responsible for so much injustice and violence and death and hate and greed and... and laziness and and uh, all the seven deadly sins like crammed into a country would be america you're too prideful to admit that what you're doing is destructive and wrong and, and you know of course we do a bunch of great things or we did i'm not so sure we do anymore i think individuals do and individual 
groups coming together, working towards a cause. But I don't think, like, you know, when a corporation might sometimes do something kind of good, but it doesn't outweigh all the bad it does on a daily basis by, you know, underpaying its workers, destroying the environment, you know, cheating people and, and, and stealing and lying and, and bribing the government and lobbying and, and making kids fat or stupid or whatever you're doing to people, you know, you're selling sugar, you know, you're getting kids addicted to fucking amphetamines and, and Percocet and you're, you know, like you're buying up inventions and squashing them so that your fucking old outdated mode of transportation, a uh, fucking combustion engine uh, just keeps on the market, like, it's just so much shit, everything, everything is fucked, and, you know, and that's why some shit makes me so mad, too, like, fucking, you're gonna put someone in jail for weed, dude, how about you go find a goddamn politician that just gave an order to bomb a village, uh, of children in Yemen, or Syria, or fucking, you know, Go do something useful. Don't fucking arrest someone for smoking weed or whatever. Like, that's that's a lot of what bothers me about society. And I, that was a rant. I got way too far off track here. I don't even know what I'm trying to talk about. Just that, like, all this shit. Everything is fucked, man. Everything. And I'm losing hope. No, I'll say I don't have hope in the system. If I have hope, it's that someone radical is going to come along and change it. Or if I have hope, it's that... No, I don't have much hope in our government get much better. I think we need like a revolution to really get better. But... There's a couple more things I, I can rant about. Like, I saw this post from Kesha, and, uh, apparently she was fat at one point, and apparently now she's not fat, uh, but she said something that was really dumb. She said, women are powerful because they can decide when to breed and continue the human race. If they don't want to make any more babies, the human race will die. Well, fucking, not really, for starters, um, if men decide not to make any more babies, the human race will die. Same with women, I guess. But if you want to get down to, like, the human race living and dying, it's just so dumb. Like, well, you need... It's half and half. The men need to do something, too. And, oh, men can't resist. Oh, all men are the same. All men would give in. Like, yeah, if you're going to do generalities like that, then, then I would also say the human race wouldn't end because men would just start taking it and continue the race. And would it be... So here's a question I was thinking about. If... It's like when when do unethical things become ethical? Say you had a group of humans, right? And they traveled to... Uh, some meteor is going to hit the earth, all the humans are going to die. They send 20 humans off the planet to to another uh, world somewhere, an exoplanet, like one of the ones that was discovered in uh, what the Kepler system. Something like that. Um, hold on, it's right here. It's not right here, but it's literally three tabs over. Four tabs over. Five tabs over. You know what? It's not fucking here. Um, what am I talking about, dude? Yeah, the Kepler belt. I'm trying to find that for you. That was stupid. Okay. Um, here we got the Russian jets. Why are we flying so close to them? I don't know. Yeah, I guess I can't find it. But apparently there's some fucking exoplanet they found maybe uh in the kepler belt I don't, I don't know what i'm saying uh but it should be um here science well 
Earth-sized habitable zone exoplanet found hiding in archived Kepler, Kepler data. Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate says this intriguing distant world gives us even a greater hope that a second Earth lies among the stars waiting to be found. Now, suppose you had 20 people being shipped off to this Earth-sized habitable zone. A meteor can't, was coming to Earth. It's going to hit it, kill everybody. Everybody on Earth dead. Only humans left are these 20 people left alive. Now, questions of ethics are going to change when you're on a smaller scale to a big scale. But, suppose that continuing the human race is good. That we will become technologically advanced much more quickly. We will... Um, It'll be a good existence on whole for the majority of people. More than half the more people are going to have better lives than bad lives, I guess. Or better lives than what would be too bad to not be worth living. So all lives, or virtually all lives in this new human lineage, all those lives are going to be worth living. They're going to be good. They're going to have joy. There's going to be love. There's going to be hope. You know, there's going to be good stuff. But, you know, suppose when they get to this exoplanet, uh, half the people die off the bat. Uh, the spaceship crafts, ten of them dies. And you got, you know, uh, three women and seven dudes. And three of the dudes go off to, you know, try to find some food you know they're hunting they're going down into a cave to get some mineral that they need so they can keep power in their generator i don't know what's happening say three more leave don't come back so you got four dudes three ladies say one of the dudes and one of the ladies goes off and say you know maybe they're getting freaky and they die like Like there's some expulsion from the ground and it's, you know, uh, carbon monoxide or something and they just die. And then the other six people get so worried about having sex that they're like, we're not going to do it. And the women are like, definitely not, definitely not. Last time they did it, you know, Kathy did it and she's dead now. Look, Kathy's fucking dead now. God damn it. Jim, just, just couldn't fucking keep it in your pants. Cut your jam. And so, and so they're like, all right, listen, we're not going to have sex with you guys at all. We're not continuing the human race. Sorry, not happening. Now, would it be ethical or not to force the continuation of the species through something like that? Like, like that's not, that's obviously terrible in every other situation. And I'm not saying it's not terrible in this situation. I'm just thinking out loud and trying to think through it. Cause I haven't, you know, it's, it's an interesting thought. If so much good was going to come from all the future generations, but these women refused to breed, you know? Kesha wouldn't be wrong. It would be up to the men then. And if the men made them breed, you know, through coercion, which would probably be the best way, or um, or force, which would be one of the worst ways. Um, there may be worse ways even than that. But, you know, would it then be ethical that for someone to do that? Because... The human race would die if they didn't. There would be... You know, we think we're the only conscious ones, but there won't be any life as intelligent as us in our own way that can think about, that can consider the universe, that can try to find out the origins of the universe and the origin of our species and the origin of... I don't know, meaning, you know? And that's a weird one, because I would think, I think you have a obligation to continue the human race. And it's, you know, might be old-fashioned, but for real though, like, you could say, oh, the world's so terrible, so terrible, I don't want to bring a child into this world, the world's so terrible, we can't bring a kid into the world, there's there's poverty and death and destruction, blah, 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 well, like, well, it's a, right now is the best time to live, ever, you know? 
ever. It just is. Things are way easier, you know? Very few people relatively die of starvation or, I mean, still too many die of starvation and preventable disease and, and that kind of thing, but uh, not a lot do, so... So life's pretty good. And if you think, oh, the world is so bad now that I can't bring a child into it, I think you're being kind of selfish in a way. Because the world was way harder the past thousand generations when your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents and your fucking, you know, the Mongol half the world away who is your great-great, you know, to the thousandth great-grandparent and you're just going to say, oh, all the things that you went through, all the hardship, all the surviving that you had to do, the state of the world, the diseases, the bubonic plague, the fucking, you know, wars fought all throughout time. That, that was all okay. But what I'm going through is terrible, so I'm not having it, putting a kid in the world. No, I think there are perfectly legitimate reasons not to have a kid. I just don't think that's one of them. Oh, the world's terrible nowadays. Can you fucking stupid compared to what? Compared to heaven? Because heaven's made up. Um, uh, here's a question. Would you rather live now or when Jesus lived? Jesus was crucified for having ideas. If he existed. You know? Galileo. You know? Ostracized because he, he had a different view of how the universe worked. Like, there's so many seriously you'd rather live in another time uh remember you know when people had slaves everywhere and it was normal like you'd really is this a, how is this world too bad to bring a child into it slaves brought children into the world there's hope always it's it's like you can't say that the world's so bad you're not going to bring a kid with it, that's just not true, and it's stupid. Anyway, in that situation, I do think it is ethical to somehow continue the species, because it's the only thing we're here to do. All of our ancestors did it. We need to do it. And again, if you have your reasons for it, I respect that. Don't do it. But I mean, just personally, what I think is that the, the, the role of humans is to make more humans, um, ultimately. And the role of humans is to make more humans while also making life for all humans better on average as a whole to make life better. So if we can have more children and make life better, then you have more people experiencing better lives. That's just better, uh, you know, according to like a utilitarian concept of, of ethics. So I don't know, man. Got a Woody, though. And this is only going to be like a, a five-minute Woody, but here we go. Um, would you do it? Would I get COVID-19 for a million dollars? And they're going to test a medication on me that might help and it might not. Would you do it? Would you get COVID-19, that novel coronavirus, you know, SARS-2, 2019, whatever the fuck it is? Uh, are you getting covid are you getting Corona? You grabbing a beer and cracking a little RNA, uh, you know, all up in your body. And I think I would do that. I think I would get COVID-19 for a million dollars and, you know, be like a test rat for medication. Because, like, look at it this way. If, it, if the medication works, uh, then I'm better and rich. Um... I help people by helping to discover the cure by being a test rat. So I'm cool. Um, it can't hurt. Like there's a 2% chance you're going to die. But there's like a 70% chance you're going to get COVID anyway. You might as well get COVID and get rich. And you're probably not going to die. And if you die, you're not going to regret having gotten COVID. And if you live and you're rich, you hopefully don't have so many complications that you regret it. You know, I'm young, healthy-ish, kind of fat, healthy though. Uh, so uh, I think I would just uh, get the COVID, man. 
because uh, think about it, if you're the first person to be cured, you'd be like, yeah, I was instrumental in finding the cure to coronavirus. Yeah. You know, you should come over. Uh, the, the mayor gave me a trophy. The mayor of the world. Uh, the UN gave me a trophy. The World Health Organization gave me a trophy. You know, Zimbabwe gave me a trophy. Everyone gave me trophies. You should come back to my place to see it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Trophies, huh? Cool. You really saved everybody? They're like, yes, I did. I'm like a superhero that just took a drug and it helped make me better because of a doctor. But I'm the hero here. I would do that. You know, fuck it. Why not? If you die, you're dead. If you live, I'd rather live as a rich man than live as a poor man. And I'd rather die a rich man than live as a poor man. No, that's not true. Is it? I don't know. Is that true? Well, I'd rather live, so I guess I'd rather be poor and living. But is it like a rule that you have to be poor, or can you do better and not be poor? Like, can you get, like, middle class or something? Doesn't look like that's the trajectory I'm headed for, though. And I can't even say that word trajectory sometimes. Apparently. I thought I could, but... Here we are, talking about my ability to say trajectory. Um... Dude, there was this, uh... Yeah, so, by the way, get COVID-19 for a million dollars and be a test rat. I would do it. You know, and on the off chance, there's, like, some terrible complication. Dude, I got a million dollars. I'll buy a new set of lungs with a million dollars. What does it matter? I'll get a stem cell shot into me, buy new lungs, you know. Probably get some gills while I'm at it. Slice me open, dog. I'm going to breathe underwater. I'm going to be Aquaman. Um, I'm going to buy a tiger like Joe Exotic. Which, by the way, not a bad guy, huh? I don't think he was a bad guy. I think he liked freedom. I think he liked boys. And I think he liked meth. And I think he liked kitty cats. And I think he got a lot of big kitties. And he was just that OG caddy daddy, you know? He was the daddy to the caddies, not golf caddies, but kitty caddies, and he was just trying to live his life, dog. Also, and I'll just say this real quick, what's the harm in having all those tigers in captivity if they were born in captivity, lived in captivity, and died in captivity? That's, it wasn't taken out of the wild, it was never, never influenced the wild, by definition, that cannot hurt wild tigers, right? It's alive, it's living, it's better than not existing, and it's not hurting wild tigers. And also, bro, this is how, like, people are like, oh, you shouldn't own exotic cats, shouldn't own big cats. Well, I agree, I wouldn't own a fucking big cat, you know? But, that's like saying, we should have never owned any kind of cats, like house cats. You know, what was it, like 10, 12,000 years ago, 25,000 years ago? I don't know. There was some fucking lynx-like cat in Africa that we eventually domesticated, and you shouldn't have owned those things. But look, someone owned it, and now they're house cats. You know, you shouldn't own a wolf, a wild animal like a wolf. Look, someone took a wolf out of the wild, bred them in captivity for long enough, and now you get a dog. You're not like, you shouldn't have a dog because that hurts the wolves in, in the wild. Where you're like, oh, you shouldn't get a tiger because that... A tiger born and bred and raised in captivity because it hurts the tigers in the wild. Not true. So, uh, I'll get into that. But, but, but like, uh, dude, if no one took in a wolf and raised it for a thousand years, we wouldn't have dogs. Right? If someone gets these tigers, it's not hurting anything in the wild, it, maybe they'll domesticate them. How is it hurting just to have those tigers? And are, are there animal rights abuse? Uh, abuses who knows man who really knows um but if it's all they know also but then we abuse everything else like fucking you know stray cats you'll fucking kick a stray cat you know uh lab mice fucking monkeys that we test in labs all this shit 
So, I just think it's dumb that everyone's hating on Joe. Joe just trying to live his life, do some fucking dope, and, you know, turn some boys and play with some giant pussies. Um, the boys, I mean. He also liked lions and tigers and stuff. But, um, hey, that's the end of the show. Thanks for watching. This is The World Today with Brian Stiegel. And I'll catch you next time.